I took Mr. Beast's advice about making videos and it worked. There are three incredible things that I learned and one thing that completely shocked me. Before we dive into what that is, I wanna remind you, yes you, this video and this advice is specifically for you. I know you may be a smaller channel on YouTube. I know you wanna build a community. I know you wanna monetize. I know you wanna get views. I know you wanna get watch time. I know you wanna blow up your channel. All of it, I know it all. Well, the biggest YouTuber in this world started from zero and he became the largest creator that there is today. Here's the advice he shared that made him successful. A lot of people get analysis paralysis and they'll just sit there and they'll plan their first video for three months. And yeah, I, I'm, any of you listening, if, if you, especially if you have zero videos on your channel, your first video is not gonna give views, period. It's not, your first 10 are not gonna give views. I can very confidently say that. So stop sitting there and thinking for months yeah. and months on end and just get to work and start uploading. Like all you need to do, this, this applies to people who have not uploaded videos, but have dreams of being a YouTuber, is make a hundred videos and improve something every time. 100 videos, crazy, right? Let me know in the comments below. Have you made 100 videos yet? Are you near 100 videos? Or maybe you're just on your first video. Let me know how many you've made. Imagine you made one YouTube video per week for an entire year. That would be 52 YouTube videos for a whole year. Now imagine if you did that for two years, that would be 104 videos. Just think about that. It would take you two years putting out one video a week to hit a minimum of 100 YouTube videos. I first started posting on YouTube on April 24th, 2016, and I've since posted on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and my videos have generated millions on millions of views. I've posted over a thousand videos up until this point. There are three incredible things that you need to understand. Number one, scrap the plan. I wanna tell you a little story about how I started making YouTube videos and maybe you can relate. When I first started making YouTube videos, I started filming on a GoPro. I had no idea what I was doing. It was a vlog that was eight minutes far too long, unedited properly, and it was just a mess. I had no clue what I was saying. I just wanted to make a video. I would watch Casey Neistat day in and day out to study essentially what he would do in his vlogs so I could replicate it. I didn't even know how to monetize on YouTube or what that was. I just wanted to make a video. I was uncomfortable with filming. I was worried about what my friends were gonna think, what other classmates were gonna think, what my family was gonna think. But at the end of the day, I just had to start. And I just had to start when I was the most unready. And that's the same for you. You have to start when you are the least ready. In fact, you should start when you are the least ready and the least prepared. You heard Mr. B say, people will spend such a long time planning and strategizing the video that you need to just execute and make a video. Forget about what you're gonna do and just do it. Press record, hit upload, and publish the video. Number two, fail on purpose. One of my favorite sayings is fail early and fail often. Especially when you're brand new to making YouTube videos, let's be real, you're gonna fail. You're gonna get videos that get no views, you're gonna get videos that have a low click-through rate, and you're probably gonna get no one to watch them early on. You're going to have many failures along your way, like trying to film in public but getting interrupted, or trying to get the right shot for your video and it just doesn't work. When you embrace failure, you essentially take the power out of failing. And what I mean by this is when you give power to failure, it has a hold on you. Essentially when you fail on purpose, you are inviting failure into your life and you are making it okay and not such a scary thing. That way, when those failures do happen, everything else doesn't seem as bad. Number three, ignore the noise. Look at your social media feed. One quick scroll through on YouTube, all videos, all pieces of content begging for your attention, begging for you to watch, that is all noise. Let me know if this relates to you. Have you ever gone to YouTube to search for a video that you want to make or something similar or a specific creator that you have in mind that you want to be able to replicate that style of video? Maybe you've watched one, two, or 10 videos and at the end of it, you end up not making anything. You almost feel like you can't because there's so many voices inside your head of do it this way, of oh, make it look this way, and you don't actually listen to what you wanna make. Yes, it's important to use videos as creativity and inspiration, but don't let that control you and don't let that get you down from creating what it is that you wanna create. But that's not the only thing that's noise. The comment section on YouTube can be a tough place to navigate. You could have a thousand positive comments and you get that one negative comment and it stands out to you and you think about it for the entire day. Maybe someone said something about your video or specifically about you in your video that you filmed and you can't help but question, should I be doing this? Is this right for me? Are they right? It's all noise. Anyone that is hating on you, anyone that is being negative towards you is noise. 
Even with everything I just told you, there is one more thing I wanna share with you and it is the most important part of this video. Number four, become an artist and analyst. Filming, scripting, editing, and publishing videos is art. Looking at your click-through rate, your views, your likes, all of that, those are all on the analyst side. Become both. Become someone who falls in love with the process of making videos, and become someone who falls in love with understanding your analytics. Don't only become someone who is in love with the analytics side that you forget the art and the craft that goes into making a video. And don't only focus on becoming the artist who only focuses on making a video and doesn't look at their analytics because otherwise you won't know what you can improve on. And the most important thing, remember why you started. Remember why you filmed the video. Remember why you edited that video and remember why you uploaded and decided to publish that video. That's the magic of everything. If you can become the person who falls in love with the process of making the best possible video ever, and also the person who understands the analytics side to making the best possible video ever, that's the beauty of both. And when you can have both, and when you can understand, if I just put out the best video I possibly can, all those numbers you're worried about, all the likes, the views, everything, all of that will take care of itself. Just remember why you started.